Yo everyone, we're back. We haven't played in a bit. Um, I had some audio issues, just drove me nuts. <laughs> I think we're back. I think the audio works now. So we're gonna play a little bit. Uh, forgive me if it's not a ton in the next few weeks, but definitely gotta give you something. Something to watch. Uh, and if you didn't see my blog recently, I'm writing a book about chess. Uh, I'm writing a series of books where we focus on one very popular star player in the past, and we rank their top 25 games in order in the book and devise really good lesson plans from all of their games. Now, the first book is going to be about Bobby Fischer. I've already started working on it. It's a lot of fun, and I hope that everyone likes this new series. It's going to be amazing, actually. Um, I kind of want every book to be like a work of art, a collector's item, something that just people need to have, chess fans need to have. So that's that. I'll be talking more about that in the coming weeks. But now we're just waiting for somebody to play us. We're in the five-minute pool, waiting for an opponent. And then after that, I'm going to look at another one of Fisher's games. I've ranked this top 25, but... I, you know, since then I've kind of like found some others that I think maybe maybe I should have given more serious consideration and my rankings are going to go maybe through some upheaval. Alright, here we are folks. Let me turn my sound down for the moves. Always too high for some reason. I don't know though when I turn it down if it actually gets turned down. I think this is the move. Whoa. Alright, so we're going to some close Sicilian type setup. Um, I'm just going to do this. Okay, trade some knights off. Uh, I'm going to castle, actually, because bishop g5, f6 is fine. I could have just taken his knight also and played knight e7. Uh, I shouldn't think, right? Because I've been away. You know what? Sometimes when I'm away a while, I start moving slow and thinking too much. So we need to stay away from that, that pattern. Uh, this move's usually useful, so I'm just going to do it. Doing b6 for some reason, or is that just helpful? Should I just go f5? I'm a little, I'm a little confused. All right, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> uh, I'll attack the pawn. The guy's moving fast. Knight e3, I like f5. Well, then he he goes f4. I don't know. I take it if he takes with a rook. Well, I'm gonna do this. If f4, I'm gonna take it. This looks looks ugly somehow. I don't know, this looked ugly to me. I could get the, try to get the queen to, uh... A lot of possibilities. I'm gonna do this first. Maybe knight g8, queen h4 type stuff. Should I queen e1 maybe to stop it? But then I was gonna put my knight on f6. His knight on e3 is clumsy. His pawn d5 and f4 are kind of weak. I like my position. Uh... Well, queen h4, bishop e1, I guess. Let's put the rook in a good square, and then we'll figure out what to do after. Queen h4, again, looks less good than I want it to look. I'll maybe put my queen on f7 instead. If he goes c4, then a d4 square is a bit weak. Knight h5 is a good square for the knight, too. So watch out for knight takes f5 tricks there, though. Uh, I should probably just get my pieces into the game, like queen d7, double rooks. Now queen d7 to f7. It was cold, just came in from outside. Rook e3 is interesting. Well, no, it's not. He just goes queen takes. No need to sacrifice an exchange here. Just develop the pieces. Queen d7, queen f7. I like the queen on f7. So I'm going to set, up, set that up. At some point he'll probably go c4, but he loses some flexibility then. But he, he should probably do it anyway. I, but then my bishop on b7 is not great. Maybe I should think about a way to stop c4. Can I? I'm not sure. I'm sure that I can. But the thing is, though, he doesn't really have any great plan. I, I like my queen on f7, so I'm not going to go rook e7 until I go queen f7. The problem with queen f7, well, kind of, well, now... I'm going to do this, because c4 is li much riskier now, because my bishop is on his rook. He should probably do it anyway, but it's like, I mean, he should move his rook. He'll move his rook on a1 to e1 or something, and then he'll play c4, I guess. And I'm just going to play develop. Like I'm just going to go rook e7, rook e8, 
and just kind of uh interesting move. I might just take it. Let's think. Rookie three, bishop e three. Stupid, right? I'm not sure it's stupid, actually. I'm just gonna take this. Oh, you saw that coming. Uh, I guess rookie seven. If if rook a one a six, I'm just defending everything by going a six. And his rook is like his both his rooks are hitting a wall. Uh, we're up in time. He made some fast moves early, but now he's slowing down. <clears throat> yeah, at some point I'm gonna go a a six. I mean, he can go c four and b four. Looks like a normal normal maneuver. Oh, but then if I double on the e file, his knight is, is attacked by my rook, so he can't really move the bishop on d two. So he couldn't, like, if he goes b4 and I take it, he can't recapture. Uh, but just, just generally my position's solid here. I'm just going to do this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. I have to, um... I have rook e8, rook a7, bishop d5, rook e7, bishop f3, rook f7. All right, I'm going to do this. But then he has b4. I have a feeling, though, I'm getting a big initiative after b4. Like, I'll take it, and I'll, I'll go rook e8. Uh, you know, also rook takes and knight g4 is interesting, but I'm just going to do this. Like, like a rookie one, knight g4 is probably winning. It's very scary. It's maybe not winning, but maybe it is. He moves the knight, knight g4 anyway. I believe in the my pieces. I mean, my bishop on b7 is not great, but you know, my other pieces are solid. My knight on f6 is good. My rooks are good. Um, he's not up material. I mean, he's threatening the d pawn. It's awkward to defend, but it kind of looks fun. Uh, so, rook. I, I mean, I have a lot of good ideas. <laughs> Just hard to say. I think knight g four. Wait, if h three, then hold on. Probably rook e two actually. Well, rook e two, knight d four, knight g four. Uh wins. If knight g4 right away, h3, rook e3, eh. so simple. Oh, this is my, sorry. If he goes knight d4, I can go rook e3. It's either rook, I'm not sure which one's the best. They both look pretty good. I'm going to play the safety. Well, if I do the other, oh no, I'll do this one. <clears throat> Next move, knight g4, it's like, so it's really unpleasant, I think. Like if knight e6 rook takes, rook h3 is like a Rottweli, uh Rubenstein game with queen h3. Well, I could take with the queen even, maybe. Just to be like really fancy. Should I do that for amusement? I mean, because it's so much cooler, but... I'm going to do it this one. All right. Uh, I mean, you know, practical. From a practical standpoint, I should just take with the rook. But it's totally like the game, uh, Rottweli, or Mot whatever. I forget it's Rottweli or Mottweli, but Rubenstein is black. It's a famous game where he goes queen h, uh, rook h3 at the end, or queen h3 or something. Black white can take it in all different kinds of ways, but then there's mate on h2. So, kind of interesting. Learning the class, understanding the classics, very important. Um, and I'll, I'll actually show that game after. You know, because I've been really focusing on these historic games for this books I'm writing. Uh, it's like I think about them a lot. But this was a this was a cool finale. But you know, the cool thing was I, I recognized I could do this. And then then you have the big question in in life is like, just in case I'm missing something, just in case I was pretty sure I wasn't, but just in case I prefer not to be down a queen. So like you have to have that kind of um, self-awareness that you might might be overlooking something, but I think it's just mate. Yeah, it's mate and one. <laughs> um, the game's over here. Let's see what the computer recommends. It recommends the other one, queen takes. But I mean, you know, when you when you're familiar with these famous games, uh, ideas like this flow a lot easier. I'm gonna find the game real quick. 
we'll, we'll look at, at the end real, real fast. George Welly versus Akiba Rubenstein. This is maybe his most famous game, and it's, it's kind of like popular because, um, say Anand, Aroni and Anand had a similar game. And I'm sure when I do a book about Rubenstein, this will be one of his top, his top games in the book. So we're not going to worry too much about the opening, but I just want to show you the final finesse and demonstrate the clear, clear similarities between that and this game. So queen d2 is considered a bad move. Bishop just developed the bishop, which is pretty normal. Queen e7. The opening's not so important. Just white plays pretty listless, listlessly. Like they don't, they're, they're down in development basically. Uh, queen e2 to get out the pin. Uh, and then if you take a look at this position, it's symmetrical, except, like, all the knights and all the bishops are symmetrical, except black's already castled and already has the rook on d8, and it's black's move. So in such positions, knight e5 is, like, a well-known... Whoever gets knight e5 or knight e4 in first is usually a little better. Uh, this is just, like, an idea in such symmetrical positions. So black's better because we're just up on time. F4. I mean, he's making some weakening moves here, of course. Check. And now comes the awesome tactic. So if queen takes knight, we can go rook takes bishop. But the key is the very finale, which is like very similar to what I did. Uh, and now he plays some cool moves, I think like rook, D, rook c3. So, um, and after pawn takes, rook d2. Queen takes, bishop takes, the winning move. Now tell me if that's not exactly the same theme I used in my game. I don't know. Um, but again, I was able to see it very quickly in a Blitz game because of famili familiarity with a classic game like this. Uh, I went through it very fast, I apologize. I mean, all kinds of cool things are happening here. I just wanted to show the, the final finesse. The idea here is that we're attacking the queen, and, you know, if he takes it, well, that's what he did. <laughs> um, Rook H2 is made. I think other moves win, too. Um, and if he, if he takes this, uh, well, we take... And then we're, we're taking on h2 with mate. Uh, but, you know, it helped me in this game. I mean, maybe I, I probably would have found it anyway. But it's nice when you're actually playing the game and you're thinking of that famous game and you're playing the move because you're kind of connecting the two. So thanks for watching, folks. Uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.